esteemed viewers, uh, this tutorial is an attempt to which has been set forth in order to discuss some of the nonsense of AI and also to provide a glimpse uh, of the subject area that has been developed over years. Uh, and we also mention in this tutorial uh, the key movers, the important issues and breakthroughs. Uh, essentially, this uh, video or this tutorial provides a gentle helping hand to guide uh, newcomers into this particular subject. Uh, of course, this video is not necessary, I feel, for those already familiar with the subject of AI. But nevertheless, it could stimulate some thoughts or provide useful nuggets of information. Um, artificial intelligence has shifted dramatically in the last few years and uh, several textbooks have been written on this topic and every textbook would discuss classical AI techniques and in a in a limited way of course and uh, in all it encompasses most of the books encompasses the modern developments that are that have been happening under the basis of a guiding theory or guiding philosophy of this artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, it all started it all started uh, with uh, uh, there is a there is a strong link of course there is a strong link between the development of computers and the emergence of AI. Uh, however uh, the seeds of AI the seeds of AI were sown long before the development of modern computers. Philosophers such as uh, Descartes considered uh, animals in terms of their machine performance and, uh, and automatons, so called automatons uh, were the precursors of the humanoid robots of today. Uh, an automaton, an automaton uh, is actually uh, a self-operating machine or control mechanism designed to automatically follow a predicted sequence of operations. And here we can see uh, a 200 year old robot that can play music. Uh, as I told, the strongest immediate roots uh, of AI probably date back to the work of uh, uh, Michelopets who in 1943 described a mathematical model called perceptron uh, which simulated, almost simulated or vaguely mimicked the uh, biological neuron. A, a perceptron which, which will receive inputs and will give an output uh, were the symbolic representation of the biological neuron. and these perceptrons uh, indicated how neurons either fire or do not fire uh, uh, which is succinctly called as on or off thereby operating in a switching binary fashion. Uh, they also showed how such neurons could learn and hence change their action with respect to time. Uh, perhaps uh, one of the greatest pioneers of the field uh, was a British scientist Alan Turing, the famous Alan Turing. Uh, uh, in the 1950s, of course, long before the computers of today appeared, uh, Turing, wrote, Turing wrote a paper in which he attempted to answer the question, can a machine think? That was the title of the book, the right, title of the paper. Um, of course, to even ask the question was at the time revolutionary, but to also come up with an applicable test commonly known as Turing test with which to answer the question was provocative in the extreme during those days. Um, right. 
and uh, in the uh, it was shortly after this uh, after this uh, that uh, Marvin Minsky and and Dean Edmonds these two persons uh, built what could be described as the first AI computer based on the network of the neuron models of Mekelo and Pitts. Uh, at the same time, uh, Claude Shannon considered the possibility of a computer playing chess. Uh, playing chess and the type of strategies needed in order to decide which move to the next, to make the next. Uh, in 1956, uh, at the instigation of uh, John McCarthy, uh, along with Minsky and Shannon, researchers came together uh, at Dartmouth College, Dartmouth College in USA, uh, for the first workshop celebrating the new field of AI. It was here that many of the subsequent classical foundations of the subject uh, were laid. Uh, in 1960s. The most profound contribution to the field uh, was uh, eventually by the general problem solver. The development of what is called as general problem solver uh, by Newell and Simon. Uh, this was a multi it is said, it, the, the, the literature says that uh, this was a multi-purpose program aimed at simulating and using a computer some human problem solving methods. Uh, unfortunately, it is said, it is also said, unfortunately, the, the technique, uh, the technique employed was not particularly efficient and because of the time taken and memory requirements to solve even relatively straightforward real problems, the project was abandoned. Uh, of course, another very significant contribution of the 1960s uh, was that of uh, Lord Fizade, uh, an electrical engineering professor, with this introduction of an idea of uh, fuzzy sets and fuzzy systems, um, meaning that the computers do not have to operate in a merely binary logical format, but can also perform in a human-like fuzzy way. Uh, the spin-off was uh, control systems like uh, fuzzy logic controlled uh, machines, fuzzy logic controlled camcorders, fuzzy logic control, controlled cars and fuzzy logic controlled cooker. Uh, so many things were developed based on this, based on the concept of notions of fuzzy. Uh, other than these examples, the 1960s was perhaps a time of uh, uh, some foolhardy claims regarding the potential of AI to copy and even perhaps uh, recreate the entire working of the human brain uh, with a very short space of time. Uh, I think in this period considerable effort did go into making computers understand and converse in, uh, in, was, in, converse in natural human language. Mm, of course, uh, this was partly driven by uh, Turing's ideas of intelligence but also partly by the desire for a desire for computers to uh, more readily interface with the real world. Uh, of course, uh, one of the best English speaking computer programs was uh, uh, developed by Joseph Weizenbaum, uh, Weizenbaum uh, and, the, and, the, and the program's name is, uh, you know, by this point of time, Eliza. Indeed, this was the first of what have become known as a chatterbot. Mm. Even at this relatively early stage, uh, some of its conversations, it is, uh, it is told in the literature, some of its conversations were sufficiently realistic uh, that some users occasionally were fooled into thinking uh, they were communicating with a human rather than a computer. In fact, uh, Eliza generally gave a, um, some kind of a canned response uh, or some kind of a Tyler made response are simply repeated what had been said to it. Merely uh, rephrasing the response with a uh, few basic rules of grammar of course. Uh, however, it was shown that such an action appeared to be uh, adequately copy to some extent uh, some of the conversational activities of the human beings. Uh, of course, uh, 1970s 
uh, of course proved to be uh, something of a letdown it is called uh, it is called as dark age of uh, ages of ai research uh, it proved um, some some of the more optimistic claims of 1960s raised expectations to an extremely high level and when the promised results failed to be realized uh, much of the research funding for ai disappeared during that particular point of time mm. at the same time the concept of neural networks were developed and uh, it fell on its face for some time and then once again uh, it took up its tentacles mm. however uh, the main problem was that ai tasks such as getting a computer to communicate um, in the in the natural language um, or to understand the content of the picture in anything like human way required a lot of information and lot of processing power um, even to operate at a very low restricted level uh, generally generally everybody um, objects to an image uh, objects in an image um, can be difficult for computers to identify uh, and what humans regard as a common sense reasoning of course for human beings it is pretty easy uh, for for what humans regard as a common sense uh, reasoning about words and objects actually requires lot of background information and a lot of coding as far as in order to make computers to do the same task um, uh, uh, as if uh, uh, the of course uh, as if the technical difficulties faced in 1970s were not enough the field also become an uh, acceptable topic of interest to philosophers okay it became uh, in interested uh, topic uh, of course uh, a philosopher by name jan sirale came up with his chinese room argument uh, to show that a computer cannot be said to understand the symbols with which it it, it communicates that is zeros and ones further he argued because of this the machine cannot necessarily be described as a thinking machine computers cannot uh, simply think they cannot be thinkable okay uh, of course uh, the 1980s uh, saw some some of the revival in ai some of the development some of the pickups uh, this was due to uh, two factors uh, particularly first uh, many researchers followed macathes um, Uh, developed ai systems uh, as a from a practical point of view uh, to put it simply uh, they just got on with it this period saw development of expert systems expert systems was the outcome uh, as the first outcome during 1980s uh, the expert systems uh, as we as you might have guessed which were designed to deal with a very specific domain of knowledge hence somewhat avoiding the arguments based on the lack of common sense okay uh, secondly the second aspect is um, the philosophical discussions continued and parallel development of robotics started and um, and uh, in on 11th may 1997 it was a crescendo Uh, of course deep blue deep blue uh, the the computer which was named and which was programmed to play chess um, chess playing computer in a in a short word uh, it's a chess playing computer uh, which which beat uh, a reigning uh, world champion gary kasparov um, at his own game in another vein in another vein um, on 14th march uh, 2002 kelvin warwick uh, was the first to successfully link the human nervous system directly with a computer to realize a new combined form of ai but more of that uh, in a moment on on 8th october 2005 it was announced that a stanford university robot uh, had won the darpa that is a defense academy of course of usa grand challenge by driving automatically for 131 miles that is 131 into 1.6 kilometers along an unrehearsed desert path or 
the desert area, desert trail. Uh, meanwhile, in 2009, uh, the Blue Brain project team announced that they had successfully simulated parts of a rat's cortex, cortex of the brain. Mm, of course, uh, the Moore law, Moore's law indicates that the speed and memory capacity of computers doubles every two years. It means uh, that the earlier problems faced by AI systems are quite rapidly being overcome by sheer, by the mere computing power. Interestingly, each year see some claim or the other in a newspaper that Moore's law will come to an end uh, due to a limiting factor of size, heat, cost, etc. Um, uh, based on the Moore's law, Kelvin Warwick based on this Moore's law, the Kelvin Warwick, uh, 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 I think he's a British engineer, Kelvin Warwick, um, what, he, what he did was, uh, he predicted, he predicted uh, that the machines with human level intelligence will appear by 2029 and in, in his book, uh, in his seminal book called March of the Machines, uh, he also told that it was not too far away from uh, from uh, far far reaching. It is not too much far far reaching that we will have machines uh, with an intelligence that is too much for human human beings to handle by 2000, 2050. 2050. Of course, Carvin Warwick is a British engineer. He is known for his studies on, on direct interfaces between computer systems and human nervous system and has done huge research concerning robotics. Uh, he is the person, of course. And uh, as we step into the future, uh, perhaps the most exciting area of AI research is that in which AI brains are grown from biological neural tissue typically obtained from either a rat or a human human it is it is written it is written in the literature particular details of the procedures involved and the methods required uh, uh, so to successfully to grow a grow a living biological neuron tissue neural tissue um, have been elaborately discussed in the literature huge copious amount of literature is available on the which will provide a discussion on how to uh, what do you, what is the probable ways and means of growing a, a growing living biological neuron tissue okay uh, and uh, of course uh, this kind of a topic is certainly of interest in its own right as a new form of ai uh, right that is a new form of ai anyway this is the that is the height of it of course to tell the least uh, it could be said that when a biological AI brain is given a technological robot body, uh, uh, I think uh, biological brain, I repeat, uh, it could be said that uh, uh, biological AI brain is given a technological robot body, then it is type of, uh, then, then it is called as a cyborg, a cyber genetic organism. Okay, part is animal and part is human part may be technology and part may be machine so it's a it's a culmination of uh, um, heterogeneous parts to tell the least um, with an embodied brain of course the, the, that is a there that is always there uh, because without brain uh, and it, it uh, they will look like uh, something like this uh, the type of cyborg uh, more regularly encountered is in the form of a human who has implemented implanted in them integral technology which is uh, which is linked to a computer uh, which thereby gives them abilities above those of human norm meaning uh, a cyborg has skills that a human does not these skills can be physical uh, and or mental and can pertain to an intelligence in particular um, we can see in the literature uh, that uh, an AI brain is usually very different from a human brain and these differences can be realized in terms of uh, uh, advantages particularly for AI uh, this once again this is coming anyway uh, to conclude to conclude 
this particular uh, discussion or this particular uh, let us say lecture or tutorial uh, has set the scene for the uh, rest of our discussion which are coming as the time goes by uh, in the in the form of tutorials under a different uh, uh, different list uh, uh, and this particular uh, discussion or this particular presentation uh, gave a brief overview of AI historical development and uh, some of the key developments. Uh, in in doing so, in doing so, uh, I think I think I have covered some of the movers and shakers in the field, uh, and they have also been introduced. Uh, with this, we will conclude, and uh, the next uh, next topic will be uh, what is AI and what are all the different. Uh, different allied fields of AI okay until then bye and if you are if you really liked this video uh, kindly subscribe to my channel thank you